Today, I wanna to show you the business model we've been using and teaching to make way more money from our blogs. It's so ninja, but it's also pretty simple to execute. I wanna show it to you. So here is the gist of it. Project 24 members are gonna recognize this shape, the inverted pyramid, and it has to do with the types of queries that we answer through our blog posts. The thing is that at the base of that pyramid or is the shape kind of looks a little bit like a funnel too. At the top of that funnel, there are the types of questions, the queries that people are searching for that are asked by a lot of people that are kind of the broad queries for your niche. Whatever your niche is, whatever your industry is, there are those questions that basically anyone who's looking to get into the niche is going to ask. And while those are the kinds of questions that we can get a lot of traffic by answering, which is awesome, lots of traffic is good. We get ad revenue from that traffic and sometimes we earn a little bit of affiliate revenue. That kind of traffic isn't very good for selling information products. The key to this entire business model is information products. Obviously we have Project 24. Project 24 is our main information product and the whole model of our entire business for the most part is to have at least some of you end up as members of Project 24. It's a mutually beneficial arrangement because you get to learn exactly how to build your own blogging or YouTube or online content creation business and you get help along the way. And we of course get to make a good living by providing that to you. The cool thing is you can do the same sort of thing in your industry. You can create amazing info products, but a lot of bloggers really struggle to sell their information products. The reason for that is that most people come to our websites on a fairly transactional basis. They show up, they read an article, they get the information they need, and then they leave. And they don't really stick around long enough to really gain you know, rapport or to actually come to trust you. They don't really know who you are as the blogger. And that is part of the problem. But a big part of the problem is we often get a lot of traffic to our articles that cover those top of the funnel type search queries. And those top of the funnel queries usually are not asked by people who are ready to make a purchase. I wanna give you an example. Let's say that your niche is gardening. If you have content answering questions like, what kind of vegetables can you grow in a garden? Well, those are the kinds of questions that are asked, sure, by some people who are about to start a garden, but a lot of people are gonna ask that question who are just thinking about maybe having a garden. And so a lot of those people that come to that blog post are not ready to buy an information product about soil mixtures, right? <laughs> They're just not there yet. And so what do we need to do? Well, we need to take the people who are asking that question and instead of having calls to action in our blog post to try to point them to over to some sort of cool information product, we need to try to sell them on content that's further down the funnel. This is where interlinking comes in. In our blog post, instead of spending a lot of effort trying to get them to our email list, well, they're only a little bit interested in gardening now. It's probably not something that where they're like, yeah, I want a whole bunch of emails about this. So we can instead focus on throughout the content, encouraging them to read articles that really encourage them further down the funnel. They'd encourage them to go from learning about what types of vegetables they could grow in a garden to how they could set up this garden and how easy it can be and how awesome it can be and the benefits of these vegetables. And the more we kind of encourage them down that funnel, the more likely they're gonna to be to reach a point where they're ready to actually do the thing that you're encouraging them to do, and that is to start gardening. Now, some people may enter your website at a point further down the funnel, and for those people, that's fantastic. We can already kind of skip that process of having to help encourage them further down the funnel. Let's say they were asking questions online about things like, what sort of wood and other materials are best to use for raised garden beds. Someone's only gonna ask that question if they're already at least considering having a garden. You're not gonna worry about building garden beds if you don't already plan to do gardening. So if you have content answering these kinds of questions, we can start to make assumptions that this is probably someone who's already doing gardening or who's at least actually getting into gardening now. And at this point, we may have an opportunity to make a pitch, the call to action in this article could include getting someone to sign up for an email list or your call to action could be a pitch on an easy tier information product. 
easy tier information product is maybe new um, terminology to you. That's because I just made it up. I, in fact, I just published a video on the Channel Makers YouTube channel where I teach about this entire concept of information products to YouTubers. It's something that's a little bit more strange or a little bit more new to them. But in that video, I walked through three different tiers of information products. And honestly, I really think there's a ton of value in you going and watching that video, even if you're not doing YouTube. So make sure you check that out. But the short of it is you could potentially create an info product at this level around maybe a complete design setup for uh, creating your own raised garden beds. You could potentially sell them even on an info product that's not about garden beds, but that is information that would be desired by someone who is at that step of building garden beds. For example, a complete guide, maybe even tutorials and all sorts of really cool information around how to set up an automated watering system for a backyard garden. That could be a perfect information product to supplement the content that you've created here because it's content that meets people there kind of further down the funnel. But we can also encourage people to continue to learn and get even further down the funnel. Try to point them to other content, not only that's highly relevant based on the article they just read, but that also encourages them to take their gardening a step further. Now, as we go deeper down the funnel, we're going to reach the kinds of search queries that are really only asked by people who are already absolutely doing the stuff that we're talking about in our niche. For example, if you wrote an article answering the question, what are organic methods for getting rid of squash bugs? The only reason anybody's asking that question is they know what squash bugs are because they already are facing them. They have a garden, they've grown a squash plant of some kind, pumpkins or other squash, and they have squash bugs that are killing those plants. This is a person that's at the bottom of the funnel. Now, there are different funnels, even in every industry, right? This is a funnel that's just like people who are gardening, but there are bigger funnels in gardening. There are people who are way gardening, right? There's homesteading where people are like literally growing all of their food, and that's a little bit different funnel. The people that are at the very bottom of that funnel are way more all in on gardening, right, than the people that are just kind of in a backyard gardening sort of scenario. But you can identify for your own website, for the topic and the audience you've chosen, what that funnel may look like. What does it look like? What kinds of questions are being asked by people who are just at the top of the funnel and who are just kind of maybe, maybe not ever even going to get involved in your niche? While it's great to attract those people to your website, recognize that they can end up making up a huge percentage of the traffic to your website and that most of those people are never going to buy an information product from you. So instead of pitching them on that product, let's pitch them on content that brings them further down the funnel until they reach a point where the information product that you are in a position to create now, whether it's an easy, medium, or a hard tier information product, is the kind of information product that will best serve the person who's at that level of the funnel. Match the product to where they are in the funnel. Match the call to action for your blog post with where they are in the funnel. Move them further down the funnel before you encourage them to make a purchase. And invite them to your email list when they're at places in the funnel where it makes sense, where they're likely to want the information that you can provide them. Again, if I'm just asking really basic questions about a hobby I'm not even sure I'm gonna get into, I'm probably not signing up for a bunch of email lists, so don't ask me. But if you encourage me further down the funnel, the odds start to go way up that I am going to reach that point where your email list is gonna be really awesome and where the information product that you can provide me is gonna be really valuable to me. If you haven't thought at all about information products, I absolutely encourage you to do it, unless you haven't written at least 30 to 50 blog posts on your website, and if that's the case, go make some content, and I hope to see you in our next video.